Hi, I'm Mark Clogan. Welcome to the Photographer Academy. And we've got a model who's running late, in fact. So I just thought it'd be a perfect opportunity for us to make a little bit of a short film on kind of um, how we set up our basic window light set and things really for boudoir photography. If you've not had a chance to actually watch any of our boudoir training or in fact any of our training to do with the Photographer Academy, um, basically I'm a full-time trainer of photographers now rather than actually as a photographer where I was kind of man and boy so from the age of 18 when I left school I went straight into the professional world of photography opening my own studio at the age of uh, 22. So um, I'm kind of background is all professional photography and things really. As far as um, most pros, they're going to be using some kind of flash photography as the kind of the main source of light so they can have a consistency of quality of light, especially if they work in climates where basically it can be dark on a summer, sun, sun, summer's day as it were kind of thing with it. All right. Um, and that's pretty much what we would be like here in UK. Um, so in other words, um, even though we get a good summer, we don't really have that consistency of lighting coming through. And even by choosing a window that is in a certain position as your main light source, you'll get a different quality of light as the day tracks. So in other words, it's what, um, half past 11 now in the AM, and basically it's got a nice light coming through, but on a normal sunny summer's day, we would actually get in full sun from two o'clock in the, F, uh, the afternoon. So it would be a really harsher light than the softer light that we've got now. Whereas in Studio 2, we've got a lovely harsh light now, um, but then it would be a softer light uh, as it kind of moves around to the side of the, build, uh, the building. So let's talk about the essentials and setting up anyway. Um, you'll often see my studio stand in, in the shot. Um, this could be when I'm kind of doing some training films for you, um, where I'm basically just going through a flow posing or whatever it would be. It's also a good place for me to kind of rest the camera between shots, say doing on the floor, whatever. Um, but again, if I'm going through a real flow of images, especially if perhaps you're working by yourself, you need to adjust materi materials or whatever, then obviously somewhere static is good. At least you can kind of move between camera and subject. Um, as far as shooting tethered is concerned, when you see the television uh, kind of uh, in camera all the time, this is really just a training uh, model rather than a business model. So in other words, if I was shooting boudoir for uh, real clients, there's no way I want them to see the instant image. Um, for a confidence builder, perhaps, I will show them the odd photograph on the back of the, of the camera. When I do that, however, I usually quickly swap it to black and white if I'm not shooting in black and white already. And I'll slightly overexpose the image to bleach out skin and so on. So in the, uh, the kind of the, the, the room set as such, really, I don't need to take up a space with shooting tethered. When you do see me shoot tethered, I'm shooting with uh, tether tools which is this orange cable you see coming out of the camera. There's a little kind of grommet, which is basically um, uh, a jerk stopper, it's called, and things really. And that basically allows the camera connection not to get worn too fast or any damage caused from the tether tools cable or any USB cable, in fact. Um, I'm shooting into a laptop here. It's just run of the mill off the kind of the, uh, the PC world or whatever it is kind of shelf. A uh, little bit of extra RAM in it, but really it's the software and we're just using it for capture. Our capture is Capture One, and that just allows us to basically get a very, very fast preview for you. I could shoot into Lightroom, but it was just a much slower uh, image from camera into the actual visual of Lightroom as such and things really. Okay, let's talk about the studio set. Um, basically, the first things first, um, I like a movable wall or a cupboard within any small studio space anyway. Uh, and this kind of studio wall hides a whole host of stuff, yeah? Um, everything from camera, uh, camera bags, reflectors, to gels, boxes, uh, spare light, light in the lighting bags and everything else with it. But as you see it, it's, it's basically a part of my three-sided set. Um, as a rule, any studio setup that I do is three-sided. Side, 
Uh, why? Um, as a more social photographer rather than a commercial photographer. So as a social photographer, I'm dealing with normal clients off, off the street, as it were, and we're going through kind of a, a session with them. What I need to do with them is maximize my variety in the kind of the slot time that we've given. As a commercial photographer, we're usually photographing in one direction, uh, and that is because everything has to be per perfect 100% uh, of the time. So I guarantee every kind of image is going to be a sellable image no matter what. So here, though, if we kind of look at the set, you'll see we've got a three sides. So we've got the cupboard wall, yeah. We've got obviously the window itself. Then we've got another kind of changeable area. In this case, We've got a flower wall and a simple screen. The screen is being hide to transition from the flower wall to the window. Hides a bit of our kind of black drapes as well and things with it. Um, I'm asked quite a lot about the flower wall. And these are basically um, kind of uh, one square foot or half a me meter. I can't remember how big, big they are now. Um, but basically um, they're on plastic and we stitch them together with just some ties. So you'll kind of see them here, they're just actually tied together. And this gives us a really, really good effect. And then basically when it's together, we've got a wall. Um, it's not a cheap background, but it's something when you invest into the likes of a uh, dynamic background, like a flower background, it's gonna give you um, multiple uses, either whether it's out of foam, focus or being used as a close-up. So in other words, I can put the client directly onto the flower wall or I can stand, stand them a couple of feet in front of it and we'll get a, diff a different effect. We do use the flower wall from time, time to time for an overhead image, so it's laying down. Um, and the only thing I'll say is it's not the most pleasant experience for the client uh, because it is on a plastic back and all these little flowers are kind of put on with little kind of lugs and so they can feel a little bit uneasy in that but we can always put a sheet underneath them in the main part of the back and the bottom to ensure there's uh, less issue so as far as the exposure is concerned um, it will change obviously um, if they're very very close to the light source the exposure where the face is or the bottom is or the boobs are whatever is what we're going to expose for um, as they move towards the uh, darker side of the set. So in other words, as a rule, yeah, if you think about exposure here, as you step around about two feet, it's about a stop. Step another two feet, another stop, and so on. So if I was on the likes of 100 ISO and F8 here, I would technically be 200 ISO and F8 here, and then I'd be kind of 400 ISO and F8 here. Obviously, it's going to change a little bit depending on the... Uh, uh, the sunniness, uh, uh, the amount of sun kind of coming through and the different kind of places and so on with it. Uh, you'll see a kind of a simple blow up bed uh, that we've got in set. Um, we use that quite a lot because in our training mode, we're trying to encourage you to make you realize that you don't have to be a full-time boudoir photographer if you don't want to be. You can be a part-time boudoir photographer, mix it in with other photography as well. And just having the kind of the uh, a, a bed, physical bed, in a studio environment all the time can pretty much actually take over a bit too much space, whereas a blow-up bed is technically up within an, a five, 10 minutes, and it's down within five or 10 minutes as well with it and things really. And you can invest into these things without any real trouble. So as far as the kind of the basic setup is concerned, make sure you're working with three sides to a studio, a studio where possible. <clears throat> if you like the idea of day um, a daylight, then that's great but you want to be able to actually shoot along the, win uh, the window as well as towards the, win uh, the, the window. So in other words, when I'm shooting from here, I'm shooting against the window itself, yeah? When I move to the uh, window itself, and the subject is kind of leaning onto the window sill or the set on the side of the bed, then, then basically I'm, I'm photographing um, along the line of the window, and that's going to give me a different kind of look and feel straight away with it and things really. So um, when the client uh, is in position, I also like the ability to be able to dance around the subject. And there's going to be basically four key positions, yes? Uh, one, as I said already, is against the light. So I'm definitely going to take a photograph from here towards here. 
Then I'm going to have a photograph from this side towards this background, yes? Then I'm going to shoot from the other side, so from the set here towards this one. Plus, of course, sometimes we're going to work with the light, so the light's going to be hammer back. So there's the basic four. However, I would replace one of those with an overhead shot. So I'm up on some steps, I'm shooting down towards the subject anyway. If you're really limited in height as far as your studio is concerned, then think about instead of actually just trying to shoot the overhead shots um, on, on the actual bed, just take the mattress off or the duvet off and basically lay that down flat and then basically you'll be able to shoot down and you'll gain yourself about two or three feet, of course. So, hope you enjoyed this little bit of an introduction into the, bu uh, the boudoir and our three-sided stu uh, studio in here. The only thing I've got to say to finish off with is if you're looking to replace a big window like that with flash, put flash in the window and then at least it's going to work in pretty much the same way. See you on the next film. Take care. Bye-bye.